So uh, this is from the book. Uh, uh, the, the author is Ferdinand P. Beer, uh, E. Russell Johnston, and Geoff John T. Devo. So this is the book that we use. And we use this slide. Uh, or we, we will use this slide throughout the course. So what we will, what we will cover, uh, we cover the concept of stress, uh, review the statics, you have done this in mechanical solid, uh, structure free body diagram, and as we know, everything is in equilibrium. So in analyzing the structure, you need to get all the forces in equilibrium before we start doing the analysis. And the component of free body diagram, methods of joint stress analysis, design, axial loading, normal stress, centric, eccentric, sharing stress. Uh, we have sharing stress example, bearing stress, analysis and design example, rod and boom, normal stress, pin shear stress, pin bearing stress, stress in two forces members, stress on oblique plane, maximum stress, stress under general loading, still stress and factor safety. So this is the area that we will try to cover throughout the course. So we try to cover this in the first week. If you are able to complete this, we may uh, continue next week. Okay, so what I would, to, what I would like to introduce, to introduce to you first is the main objective of the course, the main objective of the study uh, is, is to provide you, the engineer, means to analyze and design various machine and load bearing structure. And to be exact, for you is you be able to have the knowledge and competency for the next course, which is the aircraft structure repair. So the aircraft structure repair is a course which we have to calculate the stress and strength of the repair. So we have to calculate, we have to determine the strength of the repair and how we do it, we need to determine the stress due to the load applied on the repair and then we uh, compare the stress with the material strength. The material strength, like I said last week, is the unit of stress. So that's why we need to understand how to do the stress analysis because we need to calculate the stress test for each member of the structure. So this course will give you that uh, knowledge. Uh, and not just stress, we also will study the deformation. Uh, as you apply the load, the structure will elongate or stretch. And uh, the percent of the elongation we call it strain. So you also uh, see the stress and strain curve uh, for each material. So we take a very simple example here, uh, review your mechanic of solid. Uh, we have uh, two member. Okay, one is rectangular, one is uh, circular, and we have applied load 30 kilogram at the end of the member. We can take, we can imagine this is like a lamp where probably this 30 kilo here we hang a lamp. And then, uh, so here we take, we try to understand the structure. Uh, the structure is designed to carry 30 kilo newton load. It consists of boom. So boom, when the structure is taken out here, we call it boom and rod. So there's a boom and rod. Rod is to support the structure and also to stabilize the structure. And the joint all here pins. So it, this is this is two bracket here. One of two bracket, or we can also call this lock in aircraft design. We call it lock. So we we install these two, the rod and the boom, 
using the pins. So it's just pin join everywhere. And uh, we have to perform static analysis to determine the internal process. So we need to determine for us to study uh, the stress. For us to determine whether this structure is strong or in a pulse or strong, is sufficient or not to carry 30 kilo, we need to we need first to disseminate the forces of 30 kilo. The 30 kilo will be taken up by these two member. And how much of this? How much of each member will take up the 30 kilo? That's our first task. From there, we do the stress analysis, which is divide the and we compare the stress to the structure and stand. So, first thing we need to do is we need to consider all direction. As you apply 30 kN here, we have action. So, reaction. So, here, this pin here acting downward. So, we also need to think of the uh, uh, axis. Okay. We have vertical axis. This is two dimensional. We have y axis vertical and x axis horizontal. So, this uh, will be acting into the space. So, the space have axis x and y. If we got three dimensional space, we got x and y, z. So, z is the depth or the height. So, for this situation, as you apply the 30 kN here, and we have a force acting here downward, 30 kilo, and the reaction to this will have one reaction, uh, which is trying to pull this beam away, is reacted at A, another force, horizontal, and the vertical force here also reacted as you apply the load, this beam tried to pull away and reacted a force. AX and also XY. So this is the reaction of the force. So it means that if you look at the arrow to the right, so the beam is pulling to the to the left. So this arrow here to the right and the beam basically pulling so we have arrow opposite that uh, AX. Similarly in this situation as we put the kilo down so the pin here to go, go pull, out, pull down to 30 kilo and uh, then it, it will be reacted to uh, all vertical forces. Similarly, at this point, point here, we have CX and CY. So normally we use this symbol C because a point C, A because a point A, and as the direction horizontal is X axis, and direction is vertical, is y axis. So that's why we have the, the small uh, letter here, small x looking at the x axis and small y looking at vertical axis. So what we need to understand in the past, what we have learned, everything should be in. So everything is in equilibrium or the moment will be in equilibrium all the forces in all direction, X and Y will be in equilibrium. So first look at the moment. Moment at C. Moment at C here. So the sum of the moment, okay, this is sum. Sum of the moment at C is zero. So equilibrium, when we, when we have everything in equilibrium, everything will be zero. So the sum of the moment at C in equilibrium should be zero. So what will be the moment there? The moment will be AX time 0.6. Ax is Ax here, the force Ax time 0.6 meter. So distance between C to the force here is the force, the moment, the force time the distance. Force time distance is a moment. So moment at C is this act so I react to the C, okay, it's a rotation here, moment uh, with distance of 0.6 mm. So A6 time 0.6 mm. And the direction here is positive. Okay, look at here, positive. We go, we go the other way around, it will be negative. So in this situation, we're going into the anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise motion is positive. So uh, AX time 0.6 
and minus, not minus, and uh, 30 here, time point A. Okay, 30, 30 basically acting, okay, if we got perpendicular, we have another perpendicular here, okay, so 30, acting in clockwise, distance of point A. And because of this is clockwise, so it is in reverse direction. We have set the convention positive is anti clockwise, now it's clockwise, you got negative. So 30 times 0.8. After you solve the solution here, you got AX equal to 40 kilonewton. So by having this, by setting up this equation of equilibrium moment, in equilibrium at C, you get the AX equal to 40. So now you're able to solve. So the reaction at A here in X direction is 40 kilonewton. The next thing is we're trying to set equilibrium for the X, for the forces on the uh, horizontal direction. So we have FX should be zero. So any forces on the horizontal, acting horizontal or on the x axis should be set as zero. So what we have, we have this one ax. We have another one here is cx. So we have set the positive when the force is pointing to the right. So we set here the equilibrium when the force pointing to the right and that is positive. So we have AX and we have CX. So AX plus CX. So those two, no other forces except these two. So the CX equal to, uh, so we have, we have to solve for the CX. So we solve CX as AX move to the other side is become negative. So CX minus and net CX is negative AX because it has transferred to the other side. And we replace AX equal to 40 because AX will be 40. And it's minus 40 because we carry the uh, the term minus here. As we do the algebra and as we move this C to this side, it become negative. Okay, so now the, for the Y direction, for Y direction, we take a direction, the, all the total forces moment or the total force on the vertical or y axis should be zero so then we set that one that is the that is whole to be true otherwise we cannot get the solution then uh, the direction is positive as we point up and negative as we point down so we do have here cx on y ax on the y so cx okay cy plus ay CY, AY, all these are in the vertical direction. So, AY plus CY, minus 30, here's the 30. Convention is positive if we point up. So, now it's point down, so it's minus 30. So, AY plus CY minus 30 equals to 0. Now, we have AY, CY equal to 30. So, how we solve for AY and CY? AY and CY cannot be determined by this equation. So we have to do other ways how to treat this. So far, any questions? Can you follow? Can I move to the next slide? Yes, sir. Okay, anyone else? Okay, next. So it cannot, cannot be solved, it's hanging because we cannot get a simple algebra to solve this. So what we need to do is we need to build the component of free body diagram. Okay. And here, AY and CY cannot be determined from this equation. 
And what you need to do is component free poly diagram in addition to the complete structure. Each component must satisfy the condition for static equilibrium. Have a component and free poly diagram. Now we have to consider the moment at V. Okay, earlier we consider component moment at E. So we have to choose B, try to get some way, some mean to solve it. So we have to choose all the point. We have to keep changing the point and try to get the uh, set the equation for you to be able to solve it. So now it's, uh, so you use the convention throughout the study later on, we use the convention as we get the forces at the moment and thicker wise, it is positive. If it is clockwise, it will be negative. And some of the moments, some of the forces should be zero. So those are the, the, the condition or those are the, the rules that you need to follow. All the forces or the moment will be zero and you have to choose the convention uh, for the counterclockwise will be positive, for clockwise will be negative for the moment and for the forces uh, to the right will be positive and up, upward is positive. If going to the left will be negative, if going downward to be negative. So moment at Z, B, okay, B here moment should be zero. So what we have is A Y, okay, A Y, A Y here. A moment should be taken ninety degrees to the force to the point. So A Y, A Y, because it's going up, it will rotate clockwise, will be minus. Minus a y times the distance, the arm, because the force time arm, you get moment. Moment only when you have force time arm. So you have to have you have to have the arm. The arm is point eight. The force is a y. A y is ninety degrees to the point B. So a y time point eight, but it is minus because the convention say anti clockwise is positive. Clockwise will be minus. So you got the equation. And no other forces will be acting, uh, will be giving moment a B, only A. So, uh, for B. So now we have uh, AY, zero, uh, zero equal to minus AY, AX. So AY will be zero. So when the AY is zero, you go with the equation here. When AY is zero, so CY, become 30. So you can see here, CY is 30. As AY is 0, CY is 30. So we got all the forces. Now we got the CY, we got the AY, we got the AX, and we got all the forces that uh, that required. Okay, now, <clears throat> so the reaction forces that we have along the boom uh, here is CX. Okay, A, A uh, 40. CX. CX is uh, 40. Okay, and CY is 30. So we have the member forces here. Okay. For forces here, we have the uh, 40. And we have here is uh, CY and CX. So CY and CX, we cannot solve. We need to resolve it to this angle. So this is CY, this is CX acting here. And obviously, there will be a force along this beam. So for this, it's a theory. But for this, you need to have the forces along the beam. Remember, our task is to ensure what are the forces along the members. So in order to that, we have to do the theorem, uh, the, we have to do the theorem Pythagoras, uh, where now this member, okay, this is the member here, and you know here is 30 degree, and we know here is, uh, is, uh, is 40, uh, 30, 40, so 30, 40, 
So the member uh, in this angle is 550. So now we have AB. We have From that point, we resolve it to get the uh, this uh, member here. So you have now 50 by using the ratio 4, 3, and 5. So now we got all the member force, the forces for all member. We get for AB, we got for the BC. Okay. A, B, and B, C. Now we have now A, B, and B, C. After you got this member forces, and easier for do for you to do the stress because the stress will be just the member uh, here, the member force against the cross sectional area. So far, any any question on this? How to get the member forces A, B, and B, C? So this is simple exercise. You may get more uh, complex uh, problem later on. So this is just a simple example for you to, to see how to come up with the force AB and force BC. So next, stress analysis. Okay. What I did in slide one, two, three slide, we try to establish the forces on the member. So this is the first problem here. We have a 50 kN load at the end of this boom. We have two members here. We need to determine the strength of the member. We need to determine the component uh, load of each member. So we use the free body diagram analysis where the moment will be zero and we solve for the moment equation. We establish a soft moment equation. We establish the the x and y equation of forces on the horizontal uh, direction and forces on vertical uh, direction. The two equations you establish, you solve the three equations, and then you will be able to get the forces, member force. As you get the member force, so you know the AB, you have calculated also the BC. 40 and 50 kilometer. Okay. If the member here, okay, this member is found, remember, and it is 50 millimeter in diameter. So you need to calculate the stresses that go to the member by just dividing the forces over the cross section area. The forces we have determined earlier 50 kilometer. The cross sectional area is pi r square because it's round, which you get 300 and 314 10 to the minus 6 meters square. As we divide this uh, 50 kilonewton over 314 10 to the minus 6 meters square, you end up with a stress of 159 megapascal. 159 to the 6 newton meters square. So 10, 10 to the 6 is mega, a newton meter square is pascal. So that is the force, that's the stress you get along the BC. So along this BC, component BC, you got the component here. The stress along here, you got the first 30 kN and, the, and based on the, the, the cross-sectional area of the, of the cylinders, and you got 159 megapascal. And material, you have chosen steel, is the material here. The steel can go, the steel strength is 165 megapascal. Remember that I was talking to you last week. Uh, what I'm saying is the, the strength of the material is measured in unit of stress. So the strength of the steel, this is made of steel. The strength of the steel as material is 165 megapascal. So if you compare 159, is the load, the stress due to the load of 30 Newton. And your stainless steel, your steel uh, column here, your steel member here is having 165 megapascal. If you compare with them, it's good because it doesn't go beyond the material strength. 
if we go beyond material strength, we should go beyond like 170, 175, and then the, then the part will fail because the structure uh, material has failed. Okay, so that is how important uh, that we need to understand the forces. You need to do the stress because you want to make sure the, the structure has the strength to carry the load. Okay, any... Any questions so far? Can I follow this method? Can you follow or you need me to scribble to get you understanding? I'm recording this and I will just pass you the, the video recorded later for you. Okay, now, now is, let's try to design, okay. Uh, what is the, when designing is you don't have the size, you have to determine the size. So, uh, you need to select the material, you need to select the, the, the size. And your selection will be based on the, Cost because material incur cost. Uh, some material are expensive, some material are very cheap, and also some material is, is difficult to get, is also cost. And also you need to look at the weight. Maybe, maybe the material is too heavy. If you're talking about aircraft, it's very sensitive. You cannot use heavy material because aircraft is very sensitive to weight. And for the aircraft, weight is money because uh, every weight uh, will, will churn up money for them because they sell uh, the aircraft seats to the person. The person has weight. Also, they sell the the value of the uh, or the weight of the aircraft into a cargo per kilogram. So they charge you the cargo by kilogram. So it's very important that we have enough or more weight on the cargo and passenger rather than the aircraft structure. So in defining the structure for aircraft, uh, you need to also consider uh, not just the cost, it's also the weight. Availability is one issue because some material is not easily available. If you like uh, choose uh, titanium, for example, obviously titanium is expensive, it's very costly. It uh, could be lighter because you can use thinner, however, it's difficult to get. So in design, you have to consider about this cost, weight, and availability. You have to make selection based on these parameters. So imagine that you want to construct using aluminium. So you're being chosen to design this and your customer asking you to use aluminium. Aluminium on, uh, strength is only 100 megapascal. And now the load of 30 kilo uh, resolving the forces. So each of this member will, this is 50, this is 40. For that 30 kilo newton uh, force. So if you choose 100 megapascal, it will be failing because the, the stress here is 159. And obviously the strength of the meter is 100 and is higher than the meter strength, so it will fail. So what you need to, to do is you need to determine the what can you change. So you may change the parameters. Uh, you can change the, the force. The force remains as 30. And you already have changed the, the material, which is now is uh, less stronger. So what you can change is because the stress is force over area, what you can change is the cross-sectional area. Cross-sectional area of the members here. Earlier, you have chosen uh, cross-sectional area is uh, 50 mm, which give you uh, 314, 10 to minus 6 meters square. So, what now you have to change, uh, to, you look for the area, uh, you can manipulate the equation. Uh, stress is force over area. 
now you want to look for new A. And you have changed the material strength to 100. The force remains the same, 50. And you can work out the area. The area is 526 meters square. So what you can see here, if you got lighter, if you got uh, a less stronger material, weaker material, you need to change the size of the material so that you can get a big uh, cross-sectional area. If you got big cross-sectional area, your stress will reduce for the same force. So now for this situation, the now the the cross section area is increased to 410 to the minus 6 from uh, 200, 314 to the minus 6. So now we need for, you, for this uh, material to sustain the So now as you work back, what is diameter? The diameter for that will be 225.2 mm. So that is the diameter for the rod. So aluminium rod require 26 millimeter more uh, for you to, to carry the load. What was the idea? So the so now you have to increase five millimeter more for you to be able to carry the load. So you have to increase the cross section area. So in terms of weight, uh, if we're talking about the same material, you increase the weight by five. However, this one you already uh, saw the weight problem because you change from steel to aluminium. The only thing is you need to increase the size of the beam. So so far, any questions? No, sir. Okay. Now let's look at the actual load. So we are dealing with the past uh, uh, example. We're talking about actual load. Actual load is either tension or compression. So actual load either you pull the piece or you push the piece compress it. So pull and push. So this actual load because actual mean in a vertical. Either compress or pull action, but the action is the action of push and pull. They call action. So how do you, what do we get? Do we get we have to calculate the stress. The stress is force over area. Stress sigma is the force over area. So if you look at the mathematics is just the delta force incrementally and incremental of the area. So you integrate along this uh, cross-section area, but for us to, to, to simplify this uh, calculation, which is will not affect the result, so we just make a simplification, the total force over area, point force over area, you go average. Average mean you don't get the max, max stress here. However, average stress is just the average. So the average stress is enough for us to to work to, to to design the structure. If not, you have to integrate over the surface. Yeah. Integrate over the surface. So what you need to understand here, the equation of stress, which is force over area, those give you average stress. It's not max stress. But for our analysis is sufficient. That's why we stay that way. And most of the time when we do stress analysis, we always say stress is force over area. Okay, another thing of axial loading, there is issue of centric and eccentric. Eccentric means the load through the natural axis. So it's not a problem. But if you have eccentric loading, the loading is not in the natural axis, not in the, the vertical uh, axis of the, the beam. Then you have a distance. That distance give you P times D. P times D will be a moment. So for this situation, for the eccentric loading, we also need to consider the bending moment. 
not just for attention that's why uh, we try to avoid in designing the structure uh, with this situation we always design the column straight column uh, vertical column horizontal column straight without uh, any bending any bending cause eccentric loading because the force will not uh, directly uh, go through the natural axis of the material or the parts okay we also have shear shear is when you have a force try to cut the piece into two And then if you divide by this area, the area remain as what we have understood earlier is average, average shear stress. So forward force over area. For this shear area parallel to the force. Not for the axial loading, compression and tension, the forces is 90 degree. The area is 90 degree to the force. But for shear, the area is parallel, perpendicular to the, sorry, parallel to the force. So this area, parallel. For tension compression, tension compression force in this direction is 90 degrees. The area is 90 degrees to the forces. For shear is the area is parallel to the force. So that we call shear. And shear, we have to deal with shear. We need to understand how to calculate the shear because in aircraft structure, we have many fasteners. Normally, we have mechanical fasteners. Those mechanical fasteners are rivets, both nuts. And we put, we secure two plates together using these both nuts or rivets. So what happened is each plate will be carrying load and the load will be, uh, then this uh, fastener will put those plate together. So the load on the each plate will transfer across from one plate to another and that action will sharing it, sharing, share the bolts and nuts. So this bolt and nut is under shear force and bolt and nut also designed to prevent, to protect uh, the parts to fail from shear forces. So bolt and nut is not designed for tension. There are tension bolt, but primarily designed to uh, prevent shearing off. So you can see here, if we have force here, and we have similar force here in equilibrium, and the force will be acting in the cross-sectional area, so those are shear stress. If the shear stress here is higher than material shear stress of this bolt, then the this part will show off, will cut into two. So that's why for, there are many uh, way of designing and the design, some design is using double shear, okay, double bolt will share the same load, the F will be divided by these two bolt, as well as you can see, you put another plate over it and that plate end up with the two shear area. They want to be shear off of this area. They also want to be shear off of this area. So we got two area. So we get two shear area. So if you got a force shearing force to cut this bolt and divide into two shear area, so obviously the shear stress will be lower. Why we design this way? Because we want to uh, reduce the shear stress. So that's why we use double shear, or we call it also. Uh, uh, multi uh, shears uh, design. So it can be three shear for shear, depending on how many plates you put in. But the more shear area you establish, the less shear stress the wood and the nuts will experience. Okay. So here we can see for single shear, force shear force over area. That is, you get the shear, shear stress here, and this shear stress here, you do, you compare with the material shear, and if this is higher, then the part will fail. And you can also you you can also if you have two plate like this, we got two shear area, one and two, so you got two shear area. 
So force divided by two shear area, obviously this shear stress will be very low. Any question on that? If you put another plate, then it will be three shear area, so even lower. That's why you see the modern design of structure repair on 737 and most of jet aircraft, they got uh, three or four layer of doublers. So the more layer of doubler mean we have more shear area on the rivet, so the rivet uh, stress, uh, stress uh, in terms of shear will be greatly reduced. Okay, let's move on. So what we do today is summarize of what we're going to do. So now the next one is bearing. So the rivets will force us on the hole. So the force will be against the hole. The hole may crash. If you look at the aircraft, if, if you do aircraft structure inspection, you see elongation of the hole. So the elongation due to the failure of bearing. The bearing, how, what is the bearing? As the bolt rivets or pins acting on the hole, so they try to squash the hole. So those are bearing. So what, what is bearing? Bearing means it's parameters in the hole. Uh, you may use to hear about ball bearing. Ball bearing is uh, like lubricant. So smoothen the joint. Why is called bearing? Because it sits inside the hole. The forces against the hole is bearing. So for this situation, we have the force. The river will be acting on the hole. As we pull it, remember again, as we pull this plate together, we can see the force will be transmit down to the rivets to the another plate. Before transmit down to the plate, the hole section here will be forcing against the wall of the hole. So forcing against the wall of the hole, that is a force. And the, the stress, the bearing stress is still similar force over area. Now the area will be, what is the area? The area of the uh, hole. So which is the thickness of the plate times the diameter. So the bearing stress here is Thickness of the plate times the diameter. So the force over the bearing area will give you the bearing stress. The bearing stress again compare with the material. The material give you the value of bearing stress. If the bearing stress on the material is lower than the bearing stress that you calculate from this analysis, from this design, then you have a problem of failing in terms of bearing stress. We want to prevent that to happen. So that is bearing. So very simple. Why if someone may ask, someone smart enough may ask, hey, why do not use the perimeters? If you use the perimeters, if you just use straight thickness and diameter, it can give uh, almost the uh, same result. There is some change, the difference in result, but it's not much. Just like you work out the average stress. Why do do not want to integrate over the surface rather than, uh, rather than uh, having a very simple force over area? If you integrate over the surface to get the stress and compare with the force over area, uh, the differences is not much. It does not really influence the result of the analysis. Any question on bearing? No, sir. Okay. So let's uh, uh, let's uh, go back and see what we have done. We have done uh, uh, determining the force on each members. Why the force is required? The force is required for you to calculate the stress. Why? Because stress is force over area. So you need to find the force. You need to find the area, and then you can calculate the stress. And the stress that you get, you will compare with the material stress, uh, material strength, which is in the form of stress. And if your calculation, your analysis, your load uh, on the structure end up with the stress higher than material stress, the material will fail. 
and you end up to redesign. So that is what we have learned uh, so far. So what will be the potential failure? Uh, we have tensile, we have tensile stress, out the column, the parts into two, we have shear stress, we are cutting off the, the rivets and the, the fastness, and we have also bearing stress, which is crushing, crushing the surface of the of the of the hole where you install the fastness. So far, is it uh, okay or? Any questions so far? Okay, now let's use uh, all this uh, again. We, uh, as we said earlier, and this join uh, secured by pins. So let's see how you can calculate the shear, stress, and the uh, uh, shear stress, varying stress on the on the join. Let me see how far we can go. Okay, uh, maybe we stop here just to to ease of your mind. We stop at this uh, bearing and we continue uh, on exercise of. Uh, uh, we continue on looking at the uh, sample analysis. So what we have learned so far up to this point, just the theory, the theory of stresses. Axial stress, tension compression, shear stress, and the bearing stress. So uh, I will do one or two quizzes. Uh